Guy would often stay up late with his father after his mother and sister had gone to sleep. He and his old man sharing the glow of the small color tube, Guy trying and failing to understand Carson's jokes. It was one of the risks he was beginning to enjoy, being close to his father at these most volatile hours. He would crumple empty cans and throw them against the window. He would mumble about Charlie and hippies and other villains. The world was crawling with villains and dreadfully understaffed by heroes. Guy watched and listened and inhaled the sour fumes of the man's breath. Funny. On one such night, Paul Howard told his son to turn off the TV. As Guy leaned to switch the dial, his father clicked on the small lamp at the end table where he sat, leaving Guy a view of shadows cast across half of his father's familiar, tired face. Even a child could recognize frailty in that light, like a pumpkin carving of his father, something to be lifted overhead and thrown. I need you to listen to me, Guy. There was a time, and it wasn't long ago, when the air in these woods was different. You know air by now, you're a breather. Let me say <laughs> Let me say that there was a time not long ago when this air was harder. It was clear and hard forest air. And we worked the trees and it was goddamn good. But the air you know is changed, and this separates us, me and you. I don't know where the change came from. Below. It came from below. It blew over to us from somewhere closer to the coast. Fuck. Fuck. Guy watched his father drink from his beer. He could hear the trees outside groan as they leaned into the earth. I know you hate me. I can see your face. Hate the way I treat them, too. And you go on right ahead. I promise you I hate it, I hate it too. I deserve every bit. But this air is soft and dirty and needs to be clear. For one thing, know that I did not name you. I said Guy was faggy and French, and then I laughed about how those were different. <laughs> Your mother wanted to call you what she called you, and by then, I wasn't me anymore, so I couldn't stop her. And that's number two, that this isn't me. This behavior is not mine. People out there like to believe in evil. They speak of it as a force that occupies a soul and controls it like someone inside pulling levers. I will tell you this much, guy. Evil is one thing and one thing only, and that is the war. War and evil are two mirrors hung across from each other in a very small room. War is evil as war is war, and you stick a person inside that mirrored room, and that person learns things, and none of it is good. Like how his body, for instance, own body ain't anything more than a glorified prison for his blood. He finished the beer and dropped it silent to the carpet. By now, Guy had moved to his rocking chair. Blood, son, wants to spread. Blood, our disease, wants to spread. You've seen. Give it a hole. Tear open one of the walls and the blood will go and will go. But of course it can't go far before it dries, and so it relies on the same body it hates. Learn this over there. Learn how hatred seeps like a fluid, like blood life, like hate blood seeping up from cracks in the floorboards. You hate me. I can see it. And I promise that you're not alone in that, up through and flooding across the floor. I don't much appreciate how this whole town has gone to the hippie shits who want to completely goddamn misunderstand the beauty and value of a tree as timber who fail to understand the growth of this nation. But you listen to this one thing, they get straight. Boy, don't you ever go to war. I don't care where you go, Canada, Colombia, hell, go to the country where the war is happening. I mean it. You go anywhere as long as you don't go wearing a helmet and boots. War teaches you to fear the flesh itself, the blood inside. Fear comes like a curtain of blood, and it does not stop. Imagine blood in your eyes. This is fear. Fear is blood in your eyes that you go to wipe away and realize your hands are bloody, too. Your fingers and shirt sleeve, everything is already bloody. And I will tell you this. Why? Ten-year-old guy interrupted, rocking in the chair, moving, always moving. Why what? Why do you got to wipe the blood away? So you can see, boy. Now go on up to bed. Settle in and be still for once. Your father loves you, son, but you're a goddamn maniac to keep up with. Now go on, get. <laughs>